Hey, what's up, guys? Today, we're going to be setting up our Arc server on Nitrado. Now, first, I want to change my settings. So let's go over to the General tab on the left-hand side of the page. We're going to start, first things first, with the Base Settings. This is where we will choose our server name, the message that pops up when you join called the message of the day, the passwords if you wanted to make your server private or put an admin password on, and of course, where we get to choose our map. A couple auto restart and save settings are just a little bit further down, but more importantly, the active event setting is listed here. If you want to start an event on your server, this is where you would go. And then separately, the New Year's event setting is just below that. Now, if we keep going down, guys, most of these are random checkboxes that need to be read through. I really only worry about the cryo sickness box in this area here. And then the next section has some Genesis specific settings checkboxes. Now, the backup section, guys, this keeps records of all of your server saves in case you needed to roll back a server. And then the dynamic map doesn't have anything for us, so we keep moving past that. And then actually, the next couple of sections are just checkboxes that you can look through, basically regarding the admin log and server restrictions that you can implement if you don't want servers to be able to download items, if you don't want to be able to download dinos, stuff like that. I always actually disable fog in this section personally. That's pretty much the one uh, setting that I'm worried about. Next is setting up server admins and where you would go to ban players from the server if you guys were having any issues. And then now we get to the gameplay section. Now this actually has some useful boxes to check. Uh, for example, allowing flyers, enabling third person, enabling crosshairs. Uh, all of these are pretty useful to me in my game and the way that I play. And then of course the hardcore mode if you wanted to do that as well. Next, the difficulty offset. This is actually pretty important because this will change the max level of dinos spawning on the map. Make sure to override if you want to go higher than one, which is, of course, the current max level setting. Below this setting, you'll actually see where you can change the day and night cycle on your map as well. Now, this one here, guys, the destroy all wild creatures checkbox. If checked, this will perform a dino wipe on every server restart. As we go down here, guys, there's just more random settings that you can see. We can go over these. Uh, creative mode, for example, is a checkbox here that you could activate for the admins or yourself. I personally like the floating damage text in this section. And then we actually do want to uncheck the disable imprint buff setting. I kind of scrolled right past it. But otherwise, I don't change these settings much at all. The next section goes over PvE and PvP on the server. Remember, if PvE is enabled, you will not be able to kill your dinos when you're breeding. So just keep that in mind. I always recommend to keep PvP on, actually. Now, the multiplier section below, guys, is probably the most important grouping of settings you will want to be changing. Starting things off, you can see we have dino and player damage or resistance settings. We have XP multipliers. I personally like to change the taming speed, the harvesting damage, and resource health in these sections here. We can change our stamina multipliers and resource respawn settings as well. I always like to change the lay egg interval. That's definitely a good one. And then, of course, any other boxes that may affect breeding or hatching speed. You can change individual XP multipliers a little bit further down as we scroll. And you'll also see some boxes for loot quality, both fishing and regular loot drops. Getting down towards the bottom, guys, you'll also see a really important one, the stack size multiplier. This will, of course, change stack sizes for resources on your server. Very, very handy. Lastly, guys, this section is all about the baby multiplier section. And really, there are only three important settings. I like to increase the baby mature speed to 10 and then the baby imprint amount to 100, which represents 100% imprint when I imprint it one time. And then depending on what that baby maturity speed is, you might have to change the cuddle interval multiplier as well, just to change the time it takes to imprint. 
before they mature. We'll go ahead and skip the Unreal Engine 4 section down here at the very, very bottom, and we're going to go ahead and hit Save. Now we have our first set of settings done. Let's go ahead and take a look at the more advanced settings under the engine settings on the left-hand side. Now, these settings, guys, give you a lot more control over what's happening in your game. Starting off the first one here, the Dino Spawn Rate. For some reason, it says weight, which is not correct, but this is actually the spawn rate of the dinos on your map. So the setting is... Pretty straightforward, you would basically click create a setting on each one of these, and then on the next page you're going to see where you can change the dyno and the spawn rate multiplier. You can also modify the spawn limit of the dinos around the map as well. Last step guys, hit the save button to save any changes or any settings that you update. Next up, guys, the Engrams setting. This setting allows you to manipulate the Engrams on your server. Pretty much straightforward. Here you can basically pick any Ingram, and then you can disable the Ingram completely. You can change the experience point cost, or you can just change their level requirements. Or you could even remove the Ingram requirements completely, making them accessible to everyone. Level experience ramp override is the next setting, guys. This allows you to increase or decrease the XP needed to learn each level. So for either you or your dino guys, this gives you the option to make it easier to get those late game levels. The per level stats multiplier. This setting is super important to boost individual stats for you or your dinos, or even the wild dinos. That's right, guys, you choose the dino or the player that you'd like to change the stat of. And then next, you guys are going to choose the stat. So for example, health. And then lastly, we change how much health we want to gain per level. And then hit save to make sure that every character that joins the server will have these settings. Next up, per level Ingram points. This allows you to define how many Ingram points your character will receive each time you level up. Simply enter the number in this box and hit save. Class damage multiplier for wild dinos. That's basically what this is, guys. You are creating a new setting that will allow you to change the amount of damage wild dinos will deal on your server. Make sure to save any changes you make, and you can see the setting listed here on the first screen which we can also delete just as easily by pressing the delete button on the right-hand side. Tamed Dino Damage Multiplier, guys, works the exact same way, but this time it's Tamed Dinos instead of Wild Dinos. And then the Tamed Dino Resistance Multiplier changes your Dino's resistance to damage in the exact same way. Now, the exclude item indices option, this setting actually makes me laugh because it literally says they do not know what the setting is for. Ark never told Nitrato what the setting is for. So I think this is hilarious that it's even listed on the screen. Resource harvest multiplier, guys. This setting is actually really, really important because it lets you increase the amount harvested from resources around the map. For example, I might want metal to give me eight times as much when I harvest it on the server. You can see your setting listed once you save it here, and you can see it simply says metal 8x. That's what we're going to be looking at on the server. Every node, eight times the metal. And then we're going to jump over prevent transfer for dinos. That's pretty self-explanatory. You have to just list which dinos you don't want transferable. And then lastly, down here, guys, this box actually enables you to add your own game code into the game INI settings section. Now, this is for if there are some additional settings you want to include that are not listed above, you can put those here. If you really want to get crazy and set up your own settings, then you actually need to click this button down here at the very bottom. You can see it says activate expert mode. So go ahead and click that. And then it's going to now take you to a brand new page. This page, as you can see, will allow you to modify all of the game INI settings directly. This gives you guys total control over every aspect of the settings of the game. You can see on the left-hand side, there is a new 
Expert Settings tab. Now, if this is a little too complicated for you guys, don't worry. We can change it back. Just click the General Settings button on the left, and you will see the Expert Mode checkbox at the top of the page. Go ahead and uncheck this box and press Save to reset everything back the way that it was. Now, really quickly, guys, I also wanted to show you how to add mods to your server if you're on PC. Go ahead and click the Mods and Workshop tab on the left-hand side. This screen is where you will add your mod IDs for the server. There are a few popular mods actually listed down below, and when you click on them, they will automatically load their mod ID into the line above. Now, go ahead and save your changes. And you can see that it's saved, but I had a message pop up. You might also see this message telling us to change our allowed platforms if we're going to use the mods. So jump over to your general settings tab, and then we're going to type in the search bar allowed. This will narrow it down and pull up the allowed platforms section of the settings. And you can actually change this to Steam only. That way we can play the mods. Go ahead and save it again. Go back over to the workshop and mod section, and now you can see that message is gone. So we can head back over to the settings page, to our server page, and we can start up our server. I really hope this helps. I'm going to go play some ARC, and I will see you guys in the next one.